Sunday will be the second Sunday after Pentecost, but it'll also be Flag Day, June 4th. 14th, excuse me, June 14th is Flag Day, and uh, that's a special day that goes back to 1916, when it was decided that there should be a day to celebrate our flag. So I hope that uh, you'll be flying your flag, and uh, we're going through such a tumultuous time, a chaotic time in our country, I wish, and maybe it will be somehow that, that uh, we could uh, gather around uh, old glory and maybe, uh, maybe not uh, have so much dissension and things going on in our, in our country, but for all of us uh, who love the flag and who love America, uh, we'll celebrate Flag Day on Sunday. Okay, let's uh, begin then with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that though we cannot be together physically, we can be together uh, through uh, the uh, technology that not that many years ago was just unimaginable. We can record this service and uh, then it can go on the YouTube and it, uh, Ron can send it to me and I can send it out to the people and it's it's a way for us to, uh, to be together, even though we are apart. And so we're very thankful. And uh, we do pray for your blessing upon our country. We're going through a tough time experiencing uh, the pandemic still. We don't know if that's over or not. There are economic uh, difficulties, not uh, like we've had since the Depression. And and then all the dissension and so on. But uh, we pray that you'll, you'll bless, as we sing, God bless America. And so we ask you to bless this country that will make it through these difficult times. And then please bless our service, our time together. Uh, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Now the lesson for today is one of the, <clears throat> well it's actually in many ways it is, it, it, it's just a basic uh, lesson uh, for the Reformation. And uh, but not only for that, uh, but it, it, uh, this passage that I'm going to read was one of the most important in the uh, theology of Martin Luther. Uh, there were a number of passages that were really important to him, uh, but uh, the one I'm going to read is, is one of them, because this is really, really basic. This is just the core of the gospel. And so I'm going to read from Romans chapter 3, beginning at uh, verse 21. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in His divine forbearance He had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we 
we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. Heavenly Father, I pray now that you would impart your holy word through my words and the meditations of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> I want to begin by telling a story about a minister who was, uh, it was Easter Sunday, and uh, as he went, uh, as the minister on Easter Sunday went to the pulpit to preach his sermon, he carried with him uh, an old, rusty birdcage. And he carried it along with him, and he just set it down on, on the edge of the pulpit there where he had made a little place where he could set it. And then he began to talk about this rusty old bird cage. And he told how a few days before he had been going down the street in the town where he lived, or where the people lived and he lived, and uh, he came upon a, a boy, probably 13, 14 years old. And uh, this boy <clears throat> was uh, seated on the ground, on the kind of the lawn there, and he had this bird cage uh, filled with half a dozen birds, maybe a few more, but there were a bunch of birds in this bird cage that the boy had. Uh, gotten by, by uh, throwing a net over the birds as they were feeding at a, at a feeder. And so he had uh, he'd gotten these birds, they were all in the bird cage. And so the minister, he said, I asked the boy what he was going to do with those birds. And uh, the boy said, well, I'm going to play with them. He said, I'm going to tease them a little. And uh, he said, maybe I'll even get them to fight with each other. And uh, then I'll feed them to the cat. Well, uh, the preacher said, uh, how, much, uh, how much do you want for those birds? And uh, the boy said, oh, two dollars. And I'll even throw in the cage. So, the minister said, you've got a deal. So he paid the boy two dollars, and he took the cage with the birds, and he walked a little further. There was a park just not long, not far away. And he walked to that park, and of course he opened up the, the door to the cage and let the birds go free. So that's how the minister began his sermon on Easter Sunday. And he went on to say that that's really how it is with us. Uh, Paul said in his letter that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We were all, in a very real sense, like those little birds in that rusty old cage. Uh, we were imprisoned by sin. We were locked in a cage. Well, then the minister went on to tell a second story that uh, kind of grew out of the first story about uh, about the birds. And he said, once upon a time there were a bunch of people and they were in a cage and uh, they were uh, not able to get out. They were in a cage and uh, they were fighting with each other and they were suffering. Some were sick. They didn't have uh, enough to, to get along, even if they wanted to get along, and it was just a terrible situation. 
And uh, Satan, uh, he was the one. It wasn't a little boy sitting there with a cage. It was Satan. And uh, Jesus came walking along one day. And uh, Jesus said to Satan, how much, uh, how much uh, would you take for those people in the cage? And Satan said, well, it'll cost you your life. And Jesus said, okay, okay. And that's the story of the gospel in many, many ways. The minister bought the birdcage with the birds in it and set them free. Jesus purchased the cage with us in it. But he didn't pay a couple dollars. The price for our freedom, of course, was his life. And that, as I said before, is the essence of the gospel. Jesus came into the world to give his life for each and every one of us. That's how much our Heavenly Father loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Because that was the price for our redemption, for our salvation. That's what it cost for us to be set free from the power of Satan. See, we were in a cage. We were lost. We were finished. Satan planned to play with us a little. He planned to tease us a little. He was hoping that we would fight with each other, which of course we did. And then, remember the little boy said he would just feed the birds to the cats? Satan, after a time, said to Jesus, I'll just send them to hell. Because that was our destiny. That was where we were headed. We were lost. No hope. No possibility of ever experiencing freedom from sin, evil, and the power of death itself. And this is what Paul was writing about in his letter to the Romans. And it was in Luther's reading of that letter and other passages that he was given, we can be sure, by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was given to see once again the bright and shining light of the gospel of grace. You see, the church during his time had lost its way. The church, in many ways, had resorted, resorted to the old business of law. And that has happened over the years, and it still happens. And it happens because the grace of God is so magnificent, it's so glorious, that we can hardly believe it. And Satan is nearby. He doesn't want us to believe it. He doesn't want us to realize that we've been set free. He wants us to doubt. Of course, he wants us to doubt the grace of God. 
I think it's fair to say I'm not sure. I've studied quite a lot about religions. But I think you can divide all the religions of the world, the so-called great religions uh, or the, the more primitive religions, uh, there are some religions that get into all kinds of different things, sacrificial stuff. And, but if you take all the religions, I think there are really only two. There's the gospel, and there's everything else. As I've studied the other religions of the world, the bottom line is always what we got to do. What we have to do. And then the question is, well, have we done enough of what we got to do? And then the question is, well, if I do a little extra, maybe I will get a greater reward. And so, we're never, we're never really free because we're always worried. We're always uh, wondering. But <clears throat> with the gospel, as Paul wrote in the letter, in the uh, third chapter of the letter I just read, we are justified, we are made, we are finally made right with God. Not on the basis of works, not on the basis of merit not on the basis of what we've done or not done. We are justified, Paul writes, by grace, made right with God on the basis of His love for us, which we receive in simple and humble faith. As I said at the beginning, this is the core of the gospel. This is what it means. And I think, I think that these days, perhaps more than ever, we need to remember the truth of this gospel, don't we? You know, it would be very easy for all of us, any of us, it would be easy for us to become... Uh, kind of enslaved again by all the uncertainty and all the troubles of this old world that we're living in right now. It's really pretty depressing. We read about things going on in other areas in our country. We read about riots. We read about uh, people burning other people's stores down and all that, and it's still going on. A lot of you know that I, my home state is uh, Washington, and uh, reading about Seattle, wow, what's going on out there? It's not a very good time in which we're living. And that's why it's even more important for us to remember who we are. We are children of the Heavenly Father. To remember where we're headed. We're headed for glory. We're on our way to the heavenly kingdom. Because of Jesus. He came into the world to set us free. To set us free from anxiety. To set us free from fear. To set us free from, from, from the fallen world in which we must live for a time. So, what I want each and every one of you to do, uh, I want you to, to, to do the best you can to live in this faith. Notice now, I'm not saying this is what you got to do. It's not about, you know, well, you got to do this. this that. I'm not, but I'm saying let's, let's try to live in, in this gospel. Let's, let's not be, uh, um, I, I, I'm not able to quite say what I mean to say, but let's, we don't want to go back in the cage. 
We don't want to go back there. We never have to go back there. That's what Satan would like us to do. He would like us to come back into the cage. He'd like to have his hands on us once again. But he isn't going to. He, he, he's just, he's failed. Jesus is the victor. Jesus on the cross won the victory of life over death. Of the light over darkness. Just uh, remember this. Just try to remember it and, and live in it. Try to remember that you are, again, your children of the Heavenly Father. Live in that faith and thank the Lord every day that he has given unto us a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Amen. And now uh, you're going to hear Dee singing a beautiful hymn. And it's called, let me make sure I've got it's called, No One Ever Cared for Me Like Jesus. What a great, uh, what a great message there. That's what I was uh, trying to, to get across to all of you and to me too. We, we have to remember that. No one has ever cared for us like Jesus. He came again to set us free to know who we are and where we're headed. The days are not easy, and uh, but we're on the way to glory. So now, uh, Dee will sing for us. Go. <laughs> What I think of Jesus Since I found in Him a friend so strong and true I would tell you how He changed my life completely He did something that no other friend could do no one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as He. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much He cares for me. All my life was full of sin when Jesus found me. All my heart was full of misery and woe. Jesus placed his strong and loving arms around me. And he led me in the way that I should go. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for me. day he comes to me with new assurance. More and more I understand his words of love. But I'll never know just why he came to save me. Till someday I see his blessed face above. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. 
is still there. She had an oblation, that's a procedure with the heart, and she had that on uh, yesterday, on Thursday, and uh, she's in ICU. I talked to George, and she's doing okay. I mean, but it's going to be a time of recovery, and then after that, she's going to have to go to a rehab. Uh, she won't be able to go home. So, um, let's, I've got two additions to the cancer list, uh, Cindy and Isla. Lots of, lots of people to pray for, but isn't it wonderful that we can do that? I know it means so much uh, to the families and to the individuals for whom we pray. So let us join together. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that you gave to us a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Uh, that we, uh, we were like the little lamb that got lost. We were lost, and uh, you, you found us. Uh, we, were, we were like the little birds in that cage. We were in prison, but you set us free. Uh, we didn't know who we were or where we were headed, but uh, you came to tell us that uh, we are your father's children. We are children of the Heavenly Father. You came to save us and to rescue us. And uh, we're so thankful that we can know that because we live in an uncertain world. These are difficult times, but we know who we are and we know where we're headed. And it's all because of grace. Help us to live in this grace. Help us to live in this freedom more and more. Help us to look for ways that we can be helpful in the lives of others. This is what you want us to do. It's not because we have to do it. It's not because we can somehow earn our salvation. That's taken care of. You took care of it because we never could. And we believe it. We believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And we want to follow him. And we want to live more and more for him. We're so thankful that we can pray for so many others. Oh, we pray for our little ones. We pray for our children. Uh, we pray for little Asher up there in Wilmer, Minnesota. Uh, he's been in the hospital a lot. He's in the hospital now. We pray for Josiah going through the bone marrow transplant, which is very difficult. We pray that he'll make it through that, as, uh, as did uh, Sammy and Maddie, even though it had to be twice for them. We pray for little Johnny, who's got a lot of problems, too, and uh, that he will, you'll just be with them. We know you will. You are with all of these children, but we lift them up to your throne of grace. We pray for Priscilla, Blake, Ellery, Haley, and Athena. And then we pray for, uh, we don't pray for little Isaac anymore, because uh, we know he's, see, he, he's in your lap, Lord. He's, he's, the, he's in heaven. There are lots of other children there too. But we pray for his family. Oh, we pray. It's so tough for a young family to lose a little one. So we pray for Pat and Debbie uh, and for his uh, Isaac's older brothers, Tyler and Aiden. And we know that they know that uh, their son and their brother is now in heaven. But it's Oh, their, their tears, many tears, have been shed, and there'll be more. But be with the Johnson family up there in Janesville, Wisconsin. And then we pray today for uh, Aaron, who had that back surgery, a tough, uh, lengthy period of recovery. Be with her as the days are not easy, a lot of pain with that. And be with her children and be with Pastor Scott and Renee who are helping. Uh, we pray for healing. We pray for Lynn who's had this oblation uh, procedure that she will continue to recover and then she'll go from the hospital to a rehab uh, place for further recovery. Then on our cancer list we pray for Blair and Becky, Lynn, Scott, Sally, Lou, Tom, Maxine, Tammy, Arnie, Audrey, Glenn, uh, Henry, uh, Haley, Kelly, Steve, Kevin, uh, <clears throat> Marty, Cora, Max, Cindy, Isla, and Wayne. We pray for our couples. Uh, we were so glad to be able to see Ted and Jackie 
We pray for them as uh, they continue that difficult journey. We pray for Dale and Kathy, George and Lynn. We just prayed for Lynn, but both of them. It's tough on both couples. George can't go and see her, can't be with her in the hospital. Uh, we pray for Gordon and Mary, for Oz and Bonnie, for Gary and Barb. And then we have uh, some others here with different needs, situations. We pray for Jewel, Gail, Terry, Topaz, Will, Diane, Gary, Nancy, Rudy, Troy, Roman, and Joanne. Again, we lift these prayers up to you in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now I'll say the, the benediction. Beautiful, beautiful benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.